As many people have heard from their doctors or read in magazines that red wine is good for your heart, and it is. Mm -hmm. um, and this first red wine that we're going to try is, uh, is actually endorsed by the American Heart Association. But as a red wine drinker, I, I prefer wines all across the whole spectrum of red wine because they all have their own great characteristics. And uh, I, I agree with you totally. I think, you know, on the other, <clears throat> when we were doing the white flight, we were talking about acidity and, you know, on this with the reds, we're, we, we still deal with acidity, especially on, on the, this end of the, the tier. And, but as we go up, we're really dealing with also tannins. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times that's when people will say, I've got that puckering, pucker in the mouth. You know, I don't like that pucker in the mouth. And you know they're talking about tannins. So um, let's start off with uh, the Lambrisco. And this is just one way to enter. If, you, if you're not into red wines, it's a real, uh, fail-safe way to, to try a red wine, and I think um, I think everybody will be pleased with it. Just a little Italian table wine. Very pleasant, got a little fizz to it. A little effervescence. <clears throat> yes, a little effervescence to it. Um, easy. I don't think anybody could go wrong if you're if you're looking for just for your... Yes, mm -hmm. I, I yeah, think it's... a lot of cherry in there. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. This Very one's probably easy. kind of low in alcohol too, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it definitely is. Yes, yes it is. We do have to remember that there is one more step. It's kind of a rosé in here um, if we're jumping from those whites to these reds. Next up is going to be a little Beaujolais from France by Louis Jadot. And we'll look at this label and it's kind of intimidating as well. And, and we go, oh goodness, what what is this red wine we're looking at? But we know with Beaujolais, and I will tell everybody, it's dealing, we're dealing with a Gamay grape variety. So it's a it's a nice little light red. Yes, I've heard this called a picnic wine. It's just a real light, mm. easy drinking wine. That is. Very fruit forward. Exactly. A, a little, little chill on it. Yeah. Mm. I know we're, we're tasting it at room temperature, but a little chill on mm. that would be excellent. Mm -hmm. The next wine that we're going to be sampling will be a Pinot Noir. Oregon Pinot Noirs have become very popular. Um, it's latitude is the same as Burgundy in France, which is where Pinot Noir is said to be done the best. Mm -hmm. but Oregon has great climate mm -hmm. for Pinot Noir. I love it. You know, once again, I told you Pinot Grigio was my favorite white. We're this is my favorite uh, red wine is, is a Pinot Noir. I think it's it's a little earthiness to it. Yeah, and you get <clears throat> you get a great body from it, but not too much acidity nor the tannin. So it's just so, just very, very pleasant. It's, uh, very it, it's, elegant. Mm -hmm. Very elegant, yes. It's, it's always been a very elegant. It's a silky, it's mm -hmm. typically how I refer very to silky. it as, as if you're saying what is, you know, the, besides it having, it has great cherry typically coming from us, some raspberry. Um, very but you, food friendly. Oh, one, yes. Uh, wonderful food friendly wine. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll just stick with people today. <laughs> no, we're going on. So we're going to get into a more serious, more body, more tannins at this moment. We're going to jump into a uh, to a Merlot. So we're going to try a little red diamond. This is actually our number one selling Merlot in the store. It's going to have a little more color to it. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. more kind of t more tannins mm -hmm. on and on up on that one. Mm -hmm. Some blueberry. Yes. Great. Slight spice. Very nice Merlot. Typically I would kind of run this, jump from Merlot and go straight to the Cabernet. But I'm going to go back and we're going to do a Red Zinfandel because it is so misunderstood. I have so many people that come into the store and they say I want a Zinfandel. And of course the first thing we need to ask them is... Red or white. There you go. Red or white. And I know they have that look, you know. What am I dealing? I just was told to go pick up a Zinfandel. Most people, you know, want really a white Zinfandel as far as the mass goes. But you have to be careful because <clears throat> two totally different animals. And, and not that this red, this red Zinfandel is great, but it's a very, very serious red wine. And I know that the person liking that white Zinfandel is not going to like that, uh, the, the red Zinfandel. So that's why I've thrown it into this group is just be very careful when you're when you're asking um, about uh, red wines or, or the specialist Zinfandel. I know Kelly, you and I enjoy some Zinfandel. Don't we I? sure do. We 
We sure do. This is one of my favorites. I enjoy really spicy food, mm -hmm. so this tends to pair really well with spicy food, but I also enjoy zinfandel just all on, all on its own. It goes well, really well with ribs as well. Yes, it does. I think it's just a very lush grape. It is. <clears throat> just a lot of fruit coming at you and just kind of... They're heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. Heavy hitters. It's but, just a little hint of spice in this mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. I've had some that have had a lot, a lot more spice, so it really depends upon which style you go after in the Zinfandel. There can be different styles for sure. Last but not least is going to be <clears throat> probably the most noted red wine and grape variety, and that's going to be the Cabernet we're going to be trying. Um, happens to be one of the youngest grapes too, by the way. It's like 600 years old or less, which. Um, did I hear that was a cross between um, two grapes? Is it is. It them? is. Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. Exactly. Yeah. Um, makes for a little cluster of small, really thick skinned grapes. <clears throat> Very dark. Very dark, exactly. A lot of tannin. One really great thing about Cabernet, and it's done especially well in California, is that it can be also made in several different styles. It can. It can, you can drink it as soon as it's bottled, and then there's other styles that need a little bit of cellaring to take out some of those tannins that might puck your mouth. Puck they started mouth blending a lot of these too, the, the mm -hmm. cabs with some other things just to kind of soften them up a little bit, and then you get the characteristics mm -hmm. out, of, out of different ones at the same time. That just makes you want to stay immediately, doesn't it? Definitely. Big, <clears throat> big red wine, I'm gonna get but I will say, um, it is not a wine if we're just standing around drinking red wines, it's not one that I'm gonna pick for, for doing that. Not that other people don't enjoy that, but for myself, it's just a little on the heavy side. I think I go back to Kelly and we'll say, hey, a great piece of steak in front of me, baked potato, and I'm all for a big old Cabernet. So, um, but it's a learning, you know, it's a learning curve through, through going through all these different wines that we've tried. So. It's had, definitely has Very some enjoyable. nice tannins for mm -hmm. a, a nice rich uh, meal. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. to it. Very round, and virtual. Nice one to finish out mm -hmm. the. Uh, I even evening. smell a little uh, almost chocolate in that. Yeah, you typically going back, and I know we we all we were kind of quiet. I think the three of us, but you, that is exactly one of the, the characteristics: is chocolate and. Chocolate. You know, you black can have chocolate with it. Chocolate mm -hmm. is great. And chocolate is wonderful with this. Blackberries. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Great choice of wines. I appreciate y'all picking them out. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.